Another method that serves uh, to create a greater awareness among lenders and property owners so that they may correctly comply with fair housing laws going forward. But even with this level of commitment and success, our work remains incomplete. Let's remember that while the Fair Housing Act was groundbreaking for its time, it also represents an evolving part of our nation's history. In fact, we still have a long way to go until we can say that all Americans are fully protected against discrimination under the Fair Housing Act. And perhaps no one is more keenly aware of the law's current shortcoming than all of you. The treatment of LGBT individuals might be called the latest chapter in this continuing evolution of the American people and our understanding of what we know is right and wrong. It took 192 years after our nation's founding to enact a law that embraces some of the most basic principles of human rights and equality. But even when it did so, that law was not a particularly co uh, comprehensive or organized legislative effort. For example, the prohibition against discrimination on the basis of sex, now viewed as an essential part of our fair housing law, a basic tenet of our society, and key to our principles of equal rights, was not included in the original Fair Housing Act, but was only added by amendment in 1974. It took another 14 years for Congress to add key protections against other forms of discrimination in housing, such as those for individuals who are disabled, women who may be pregnant, or families with children. Though long in coming, these additions were a welcome recognition that our nation's understanding of what true equality continues to advance as our nation as it matures. It gives affirmation to the Reverend Martin Luther King's comment that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. It's disappointing that we still see discrimination fairly often, but it's also redeeming that our story continues to be one of expanding civil rights and growing understanding of, of how behavior formerly viewed as acceptable is today seen not only as discriminatory, but odious, with no place in a modern civil society. Indeed, our growing understanding that differences among people should not be a source of discrimination or segregation, but rather that our diversity is something to champion and promote is important. Our society's growing understanding, for example, that individuals with disabilities are not people to be isolated, feared, or deprived of basic rights, while by no means complete is proof that our nation's maturity on these issues and a welcome addition to our moral and legal doctrine. It shows our ability to evolve in our thinking on what constitutes normal and able, and perhaps most importantly, the right and wrong way to treat our fellow human beings. As President George H.W. Bush said upon signing the 1988 Americans with Disabilities Act, which further strengthened the Fair Housing Act, let the shameful wall of exclusion finally come tumbling down. Unfortunately, Congress has yet to amend the Fair Housing Act to include protections against discrimination because of sexual orientation. Meanwhile, LGBT individuals regularly face discrimination, harassment, and even physical abuse in their daily lives, including in their ability to choose a place to live. A recent study from Michigan, for example, found unequal treatment based on sexual orientation in 32 out of 120 fair housing tests, a rate of more than 25%. An even larger survey of nearly 6,500 transgender persons found that because they were transgender, 19% were refused housing and 19% were homeless at some point. This demonstrates the urgent need for these legal protections. I'm hopeful that we're at the cusp of a new era of civil rights, of understanding and protecting the rights of LGBT people. In recent years, we've seen enormous changes in public opinion and public policy at both the state and federal levels. On the question of marriage equality, for instance, progress is being made across the country, with state after state affirming the right of two individuals to marry. Just a few days ago, Minnesota was added to this list. And we await a decision by the Supreme Court which will have some impact on at least the timing of future developments. As you know, President Obama and this administration have been unmatched in our efforts to ensure equal and fair treatment for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people and communities. In fact, this administration's actions and policies might have seemed unachievable, even impossible, 
a few years ago. But as the President said, our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. In 2010, the President signed legislation repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, helping to end a discriminatory policy that made it impossible for LGBT individuals to serve in our nation's military without fear of losing their jobs because of who they love. Last year, the President and the Attorney General announced the administration would no longer defend Section 23 of the Defense of Marriage Act. And in 2009, the President signed into law the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. hate crimes prevention legislation, which expands the coverage of federal hate crimes law to include attacks based on a victim's actual or perceived sexual orientation or gender identity. The administration has also made numerous changes to ensure expanded and fair health coverage, uh, access and coverage. This has included a directive from the President requiring all hospitals receiving Medicare and Medicaid funds to allow visitation rights for LGBT patients, provisions under the Affordable Care Act that eliminate discrimination in providing services to anyone who is lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, and adding millions of dollars for evidence-based interventions to address, among other issues, HIV-related health disparities. To address housing needs for people, for low-income persons who are living with HIV and AIDS and their families, HUD also manages the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS program, or HOPWA, the only such federal program dedicated to meeting this need. HUD and this administration have taken other historic steps in the area of housing to ensure that we fulfill our nation's commitment to equality. As part of its financial support for housing and urban development programs, HUD awards millions of dollars every year through competitive grant programs, funding that is announced through notices of funding availability, or NOFAs in HUD speak. The NOFAs set the terms for the use of the funds, and as secretary, I have substantial discretion to establish criteria to ensure their efficient and effective use. We've long included a requirement that outstanding civil rights violations must be resolved prior to the application deadline for an ap applicant to be eligible to compete for funds. More recently, HUD has added to its requirements that an eligible grantee may not have outstanding civil rights violations of a state or local law prohibiting to housing discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. We've included similar anti-discrimination provisions in other areas as well. For example, some courts in Title VII civil rights challenges have applied principles of sex discrimination for gender stereotyping, which has provided limited but important civil rights protections for transgender individuals. Expanding on this in 2010, HUD formally adopted the principle that housing discrimination because of nonconformity with gender stereotypes, essentially gender identity discrimination, is sex discrimination under the Fair Housing Act. This means that when HUD receives a fair housing complaint that alleges discrimination because someone does not look, conduct him or herself, or act in a manner that doesn't conform to gender stereotypes, HUD now begins a formal investigation under the, the Fair Housing Act. Since issuing this guidance, HUD and our state and local partners in fair housing enforcement have investigated more than 150 discrimination complaints under this authority. The following year, we enacted an important rule equal access to housing in HUD programs regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. The rule does four important things to ensure that LGBT persons are not excluded from HUD's programs. First, it creates a broad requirement that housing falling within these categories is made available without regard to actual or perceived sexual orientation, gender identity, or marital status. Second, it clarifies HUD's definitions of family and household, and reaffirms that these include all persons, regardless of, of actual or perceived sexual orientation, gender identity, or marital status. Third, the rule prohibits those funded by HUD or insured by FHA from asking about an applicant or an op uh, occupant's sexual orientation or gender identity for purposes of housing eligibility. And finally, the rule prohibits FHA-approved lenders from basing eligibility determinations for FHA-insured loans on actual or perceived sexual orientation.